Come on, put your hands together and give Jesus praise. Hallelujah. La, la, light of the world. Same key. You step down into darkness. Open my eyes. Let me see. Beauty that made this heart adore. Hope of a life spent with you. to say all together lovely all together holy together all together wonderful come on tell the Lord here I am oh God here I am to work. Lord, I'm here to say how much I love you. Here I am to say all together say you're all together lovely. Oh, all together My Jesus, my Savior, Lord, there is not like you. All of my days, I want to praise the wonders of your mind. Comfort sing my comfort is my shelter. Lift up holy hands, close your eyes, shout to the Lord, shout to the Lord, all the earth. Yay, call a bella pate, every la bola pate, mountains bow down. Nothing compares, compares to the promise I have. In, in every relationship, being vocal about your feelings is very important. Your wife needs to hear, I love you. Your husband needs to hear, I love you. Your kids need the validation of your lips. I love you. Well done. And it's amazing how we're in a relationship with God and we find it hard to tell Him, Lord, I love you. You're special. You're just everything anyone could ever want. 
is it okay for you to just lift up your voices this morning and be vocal express your love to God just tell him how much he means to you come on just in 60 seconds just go ahead and tell the Lord how much he means to you be vocal about your feelings towards him Lord I love you and Lord I just thank you for being so kind such a loving God you are and father I have never felt this way about anyone before your love is everlasting your mercies I feel every day thank you for your presence always been with me I just want to tell you Lord I really do appreciate how much you care for me I really do appreciate how you stay up never sleeping or slumbering to make sure I can sleep well and slumber when it's necessary Lord we just love you hallelujah thank you Lord thank you so much Lord as we gather may your spirit dwell within us as we gather may we glorify your name my father i pray in the name of jesus knowing well that as a heart begins to worship we'll be blessed because we came Come now, Holy Spirit, set our hearts on fire. Open our minds and spirit, pour on us your word. As I speak, Lord, heal our broken hearts. Let us be blessed. Because we came, hey, oh, we will be blessed because we came. In Jesus' name, I prayed. Come on, you may have your seat in His holy presence. Glory. Hallelujah. D don't miss tonight. Tonight we're having an anointing service in the evening. Just want the Holy Spirit to brood over you for the next level. Hallelujah. Let me explain some very sh quick things about the Holy Spirit to whet your appetite for tonight. Hear you, O Israel, the Lord your God is one God. In other words, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit is just one person. Same person occupying three offices. And because he has three offices... The offices requires he has three personalities. But it's the same person. Jesus says, I and the Father are one. So when you're talking of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, you're not mentioning them in the order of superiority. All right? You're not mentioning them. The Father is the Son. The Son is the Holy Spirit. You're not mentioning them in the order of superiority. You're actually mentioning them in the order of their revelation to men. The Father showed up to us first. Then came the Son. We are now in the dispensation of the Holy Spirit. Jesus says, don't leave here until the Holy Ghost comes and endues you with power. Amen. Now let me explain, ladies and gentlemen, it is a, it is, uh, it's a terrible thing if you live your life as a believer and you are not full of power. Um, the day you got saved, the Holy Ghost was the one that helped you understand the message of salvation. Came into you. There was a measure of faith he gave you at that time. And that's the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. But there's a coming upon that brings power upon your life. And brethren, you need power for several things. Oh, you need power. You can't live a powerless Christian life. Okay, please, it's important you come in the evening. God the Father, because um, salvation is the essence of the Trinity. In other words, if man did not fall, there would be no need of a Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. God would just be God. But because man fell, then a son had to be given then the Holy Ghost has to come to be with us after the Son had left. Alright? 
Now, it's important for us to also understand that because he is three personalities, God is three personalities. Uh, if you are just, you live by yourself, okay, you lead yourself. You don't need to have a coordinator. You don't need anyone to, um, you, it's just you leading you, all right? But once you are more than one, all right, once you are more than one in a group, in other words, once you get married and you are you husband and wife, there's need for leadership, all right? So when God made man the head of his wife, the Bible did not say, there's no place in scripture where the Bible says man is the head of his home. All right? We coined that ourselves. It's not in scripture. The Bible says the man is the head of his wife. As Christ is the head of the church. The truth is, is the woman that is the head of the home. The man is now the head of the head of the home. <laughs> You're looking at me funny. <laughs> That's the truth. All right, and that's why you notice that most of the things that go on in the home, God will show you to the wife, not the man. Oh yeah, because if you re let me not go there, let's stay, on, let's stay on course. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Now, because of that, ladies and gentlemen, God had to. The father became the coordinator of the team because it's now three persons. So, father became coordinator and the decision making. Um, He's the one, it was the father that said, let us make man in our image. Okay, he's the one that initiates this decision of the Godhead. The son is the custodian of seed. Custodian of seed and custodian of the word. The, the son is the word and is the custodian of seed. In other words, ladies and gentlemen, if God says, let us make man, it is, he throws the seed into the ground. And the seed must always die. John 12, 24. Except the corner of wheat falls to the ground and dies. It abides alone. And that's why Jesus is synonymous with death. So anytime the word God says, this is what we want to do, Jesus goes into effect and it drops. Now Jesus is just the seed. The seed itself cannot bear fruit. The seed needs to enter a womb. Do you understand? Every seed, you can't have a baby except the seed goes into a womb. So the Holy Spirit is the custodian of the power of the Godhead and custodian of God's womb. That's the aspect of the Holy Spirit most people don't know. Now, in other words, Jesus can preach for three and a half years and have very few followers. The Holy Ghost shows up one day, 3,000 people got saved. Because... because the seed, what the best Jesus could do was to produce seed. The 12 disciples were seed. But when the Holy Ghost came on those 12, the 12 entered the womb of the Holy Ghost. That's why there's a gestation period in the womb. Jesus told them, Don't go. Mature first before you get out of the womb. And once you are matured, you produce fruits big time. So that's a dimension of the Holy Spirit. If God the Father said in Genesis 1, Jesus, the Bible says, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and God said, let there be light. Before God could say, the Bible says, the Spirit of the Lord moved upon the face of the waters. Now, if the womb was not ready before the word was dropped, nothing will happen. The womb is exciting. The womb turns potential to manifestation. It turns little to great. A womb is awesome. And that's why we celebrate our women. Awesome, ladies and gentlemen. Put your hands together. Celebrate the women. Amen. So without the Holy Spirit, there's nothing that Jesus did that, that will have succeeded. Not one. The best the, the son will produce is the seed. But the seed now drops into the womb. The womb now turns the seed into huge life. Can you imagine? Twelve people started a gospel. The gospel moved from Jerusalem to Judea to Samaria. Look at you and I. Uttermost part of the earth. See, Jesus could not achieve that when he was here. But the Holy Ghost comes. The word drops into the womb. And the Holy Ghost too cannot just do that. He needs seed to walk. Let's go to the scripture for today. Genesis and chapter number one. Hallelujah. Come on house, hallelujah. 
Genesis and chapter number one. Genesis 1 and verse number 27 and 28. Genesis 1. Let's, let's just read verse number 26 and 27. Genesis 1, 26, 27. Is that okay? So let's read together in a chorus. Please, I need you to go with me this morning. It's important you understand what the Lord will have me teach us this morning. Very, very important. The, the new level God is finding you in this house and as an individual and as families, it's important you don't um, self-destruct. It's important. You, you, hear, you heard my word. You don't self-destruct. All right? Please, let me explain this to you. The devil can't mess you up if you don't allow him. It doesn't, it doesn't have the authority to oppress you. That's late. Let me explain this, people. Please stay with me and be very focused this morning. The devil that Jesus dealt with, that tempted Jesus, is different from the one we deal with today. He's the same person, but not the same status. Not the same status. He's the same person, but not the same status. I say it again. The Satan that tempted Jesus and was telling Jesus turn stone to bread is not the same in texture, complexion, and strength as the one we deal with today. If the one Jesus dealt with is the one we deal with today, we'll be in a big trouble. But it's not the same. He's he's, he's zero, he's, he's nothing now. Please understand that. Some of us are still thinking of him before the fall of man. We are still thinking of him before death and resurrection of Jesus. Since Jesus died and resurrected, he's not the same person. He will never, ever be the same person again. Put your hands together for Jesus. Come on. So please, don't, 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 don't be thinking of him before Jesus dealt with him. And that's the picture I want to keep in our, in our mind. That, oh, he's what he used to be. No, that's a has-been. The Revised Standard Version of Satan is a man that is totally paralyzed. He's in a state of paralysis, ladies and gentlemen. Anytime you mention in the name of Jesus, he, he assumes his paralyzed state. He cannot do anything. Jesus did not leave him with anything. I'm taking you somewhere this morning. Jesus didn't leave him with anything. Now, come. Come, my brother. Let me open your eyes to something. Lord, help me this morning. Matthew, sorry, Luke and chapter number 10. And verse number 19. Luke 10, 19. Quickly, run, 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 run. I'm talking about the revelation of God's image. Someone say a revelation of God's image. Now, this is Jesus speaking to you, please. I need to be a bit loud this morning. Want to read, everyone? Isn't this interesting, please? Bible says, behold, I give you. I give you. Now, who says this? To whom? To you. He gives you power and power to do what? Upon and and now now listen, something is not correct there in terms of English language. All the power is not correct English. All should be all the powers. All should be followed with powers. All means at least three. One is single, two is both, anything, all is more than three. Now, over all the power, that shows you, ladies and gentlemen, what you call different manifestation of the power of darkness comes from one source. 
There are different manifestations, but one source. Now, that one source is not what is all that Satan has. All that Satan has is just one power. Now, that power is not what he had as an angel. Oh, no, that cannot rule the earth. The power that he has, listen carefully, the power that he has, ladies and gentlemen, is what he took from man. God gave man authority to rule the earth and have dominion over the earth. All right? Now, that same chapter number four, Luke. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Four and verse six, Luke 4, six. I don't know why I'm going this down. This is not my sermon. Luke 4, six. Run, 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 please. Now, this is what the devil told Jesus. Can we read everybody while Jesus was being tempted? Want to read? So all the power that we read before, he just told us his source. How did he get it? It was delivered to him. It wasn't anything he had. It was man's foolishness, Adam, that offered it to him. So he became ruler of the earth. And he could give it to anyone he wants. That's what he told Jesus. And Jesus didn't argue with him. Now when Jesus died, Colossians and chapter 2, Verse 14 and 15. Colossians 2, 14, 15, please. Quickly. God bless you, sir. Now, can we read together? I want to read, please. Blotting out. Verse 15. Now, Please, my brother in the control, do you have another version? Like amplified, leave, whatever. Just verse 15, give me another version. <laughs> I love this. Thank you. God bless you. Hold on. Where's my, don't go, don't go, don't go. Where are you? I was looking for you. Now, what did the Bible say here? Please, everyone read. God. Now, hold on, hold on. From where we read before. How much power does he have? One or more than one? One. Now, the Bible now says God disarmed him. Now, disarmed him of that one power that he has, that has several auxiliaries. Okay, so this is the power that he had. The Bible says all power because it controls the earth. So, the Bible says what Jesus did when he died was that it disarmed him, collected this. Now, please put your notebook down. Have nothing with you. Oh, bless you. So, this is all he had before. So, with this, he was ruling the earth, controlling everything. So, what Jesus did was this. Now, don't forget, how, how much does he have in terms of power? One or more than one? So, Jesus disarmed. Do you know what it means to disarm? Take every weapon, anything and everything from him. So did Satan will deal with now has nothing to work with. Hold on. The only thing he has to work with now is his mouth. There is no weapon, no authority with him. All he has left is. So that, you will not see in scripture where the Bible calls him after resurrection, the afflicted of the brethren. All he can do is to accuse us. Gossip, keep telling God, see what he said, see what she said, see what he said, see what she said. That is all he does. That is what he has been reduced to now, talkative. Looking for something to go and discuss about it with God. Accuser of the brethren. And ladies and gentlemen, if you are the son of the judge and the, your accuser is going before your father. <laughs> let me tell you why Jesus is seated by the right hand of God. Uh, Jesus is our advocate. Before Satan brings your case file to God, your advocate has finished your defense. So before he even shows up at all, case is already dismissed. Come on, give the Lord a hand of praise. So don't allow the devil, the guy has nothing. 
I mean, excuse me. Why will he come and tell you I want to kill you if you can? If you can, why announce? No, I mean, <laughs> why announce? Do you know why he's announcing? He needs your permission. He can't. He can't. He can't. Brother, you can't die like a chicken. You can't die a cheap death. It, it is not possible. He cannot. We don't dwell in Egypt. We live in Goshen. All the plagues in Egypt don't have a place in Goshen. While angel of death is visiting Egypt, we dwell in safety. Why? There is a blood at the lintel of our door. You cannot die anyhow. Thank you, sir. Now listen carefully. I needed to bring you to that point. Then we read Genesis 1, 27. Revelation of God's image. Can we read together, please? In case you don't know, please, I want to tell you this morning that the only creation that exists terrestrially and celestially, in other words, visible and invincible, that is created in God's image is only man. Man is the only creation that exists in God's image. Please, please. Go with me this morning. Have your ears and your spirit man open. Your level is about to change. You see, my people do not perish because they don't fast and pray. My people perish because they don't know. Now, all the devil can feed on today is our ignorance. Our ignorance, that's all. Isaiah 5, 13. The Bible says, my people go into captivity because they lack knowledge. The honorable men are famished and the multitude are dead off for thirst. Listen, people. If you, you, you sit down with your Bible and allow the Holy Ghost himself teach you, you will not have time for the devil. You will not have time for the devil. It's not worth your time. And guess what, man? He knows when you know. He knows when you know. So those threats he used to make on your life, Years ago, he has stopped. Because he knows that it won't work anymore. You are not at that level of knowledge anymore. You have stepped up. So he, he would look for something new. Stay with me. Being in God's image means you must have three main characteristics. Now, please listen carefully. Angels are not created in God's image, man. No angel is created in God's image. And now you see it after these three characteristics. No angel. Don't forget Satan is an angel. Bear it in mind. One side of your mind. Keep a record that the devil is an angel. You, no other creation. No other creation is created in God's image. Only man. God said, let us make man in our image. So salvation, the plan for salvation that God had to hash goes beyond us. It was actually God trying to redeem his image. Do you understand what I just said? See, because you are the only one in God's image, and because something bad has happened to you, and you're in God's image, God had to do something to redeem his So salvation goes beyond you. So why is God so jealous over you and about you? It's because he's protecting his image. Every man makes no difference if they know God or not are created in God's image. So Jesus dying goes beyond you. And that's why if there is just one human being on earth, Jesus will have still died because he must redeem his image. 
Because if his image just perishes anyhow, then his own personality is in question. That's his image. And that's why God will go to any extent. There's a song that says he will jump over mountains, go through any valley just to get to you. Why? You are his image. If, when angels fell, God's image was not in question. When angels rebelled, God's image, so there's no need for salvation. His image was never in question. But the moment man fell, God's image came into question. And brethren, who are you without your image? <laughs> who are you without your image? The, the reason we comport ourselves in a particular way. We tell our children, please, don't be, in fact, I don't know about here. Growing up in Africa, my mom would nag me. Remember the son of whom you are. In other words, don't mess up the image of this family. That's what God is all about and about you. It goes beyond you, ladies and gentlemen. That's why he's so quick to forgive you when you mess up. Why? He will do everything to make sure that this image doesn't just mess me up. You are not going to mess up my image. Put you in a position where Satan can mess up his image. Because the truth is, the moment Satan messes you up, he messes up God's don't forget that in your life. Your value goes beyond you. Your existence goes beyond you. Everything about God is at stake in this your little body. Everything about God is at stake. If you have a revelation of this, there are some things you can't do anymore. You want to live your life to represent the image well. Three characteristics. And you notice that only man has these three characteristics. Only man and God. For you to be in God's image, number one, you must be auto-productive. You must be auto-productive. Excuse me. I don't know about you. Have you had apple juice recently? Orange juice. But you know God did not create orange juice. He only gave us oranges. And he left the rest. He didn't bother with the rest. Because he knows that man is created in his image. There is an auto device in us that looks at an apple and gets out apple juice. Haven't you wondered why man can look at and wander through, see the birds, and say, man, we can fly. Do you know, no demon can do that, sir. Satan has not, he doesn't have that capacity. No angel can do that. I need you to understand, ladies and gentlemen, this image thing is a big deal. If you have a revelation of it, you, you feel 10 feet tall. Some people will call you proud. They don't understand it. You feel 10 feet tall. And when they are shouting and casting down to others, you are stepping out here and say there is a lifting up. Why? The image of God cannot be cast down. The things that happen to me. See, don't be afraid that you fail. Don't be afraid that your life will go nowhere. Oh no. Don't, you don't, make sure you don't just give the devil access. Leave the rest to God. God has more stake in your life. The Bible says, with you is the fountain of life. 36 verse 9, Psalms. And your light shall we see light. It is, let me stop there. So number one, you must be autoproductive. My only man is like God. We are creative. Guess what? Can I ask you a question, church? Bring that down a little bit, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Joy overflow. Who owns hell? Who owns hell? Who is the owner of hell? Thank you. Because a lot of people think it's the devil. Ma, the devil cannot create. No angel can create. No angel can create. Did you see God employ the service of angels in Genesis 1? Let there be, they cannot. For you to be able to create, you must be in God's image. 
So it is the image of God that is kicking you sometimes. And you're wondering, these people, they don't, nobody has thought of this business in this area. You begin to think of something. It is in nature, you ladies and gentlemen. It is sin that kills all those things that doesn't allow you to materialize. But you walk in obedience with God, you are autoproductive. Your mind just generates ideas. Things just come to you naturally. You just know what to do and you don't know how and why you know what to do. But you just know what to do. Once a while, I, tra I travel a little bit and I see how man had conquered the earth. Do you know, say, no demon can create satellite that will go to space. They don't even understand it. That's why they can't go there to, to, to destroy it. <laughs> they, they, they can't. <laughs> if they could, they, no, no satellite will work. <laughs> Space station will have been destroyed. It, we, are, it, we are not in their level. I need you to know that. For those of you worshiping angels, stupidity. We are, we are, we are, not, we are not in their... No angel is created in God's image. Hell was created by God. Hell is owned by God. Not Satan. How can you be the creator of your prison? <laughs> Hell is Satan's eternal prison. Not, not home. He, Satan will do anything to avoid hell. But it's late. It's too late. Brethren, when you live in obedience to God, your mind becomes sharper. Your mind comes sharper. The creative, innate nature of God, synonymous with his image, comes alive. The Bible says, and you will hear a voice behind you. Tell you, angels don't have that voice behind them. Do you know Angel, angel Gabriel can't just come to Calgary and say, hey, um, Pastor Denny, I was just passing by. I felt, let me just come say hello to you and find out how you guys are doing. He cannot. He must go to where he was sent and return immediately. And he has no message of his own. He must only deliver what God... Have you read Luke chapter 1? I feel like preaching this morning. Luke chapter number 1. The Bible, the Bible says, Angel Gabriel was sent to a family, a clan, two cousins. One, Zachariah, an old man, a priest. So Angel Gabriel showed up and said, Blessed are thou. And said, You are going to have a son. And Angel Gabriel said, How shall these things be? Angel Gabriel got angry. What did you say? How shall these things be? He said, I am Gabriel. I stand in God's presence. I was sent by God to tell you. You ask it, How shall these things be? <laughs> Angel Gabriel gave him a slap. <laughs> the guy became deaf and dumb. <laughs> Same day, went to a young lady called Mary and said, Mary, blessed are thou among women. You are going to have a son. Mary asked the same question. How shall this things be? And the girl said, I will explain to you. <laughs> I will explain to you. <laughs> same question, Different response. You might just think that angel is partial. Oh no. Let me explain this. The five books of Moses had been written. All the priests were teachers of the law. They read Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers and Deuteronomy. They were masters at it. What God was telling Zechariah, there was a precedence in scripture that Abraham in his old age gave birth. Why you teach that and you are telling me to explain to, explain to you? So he gave him a slap. When it is written in the word, you are needing confirmation again. <laughs> but I went to Mary. There's, it has never happened before. There's no precedence that a woman will get pregnant without the touch of a man. 
That needs explanation. You are created in God's image, people. Autoproductive. Number two. Being created in God's image means that you must be sovereign in your domain. You must be sovereign in your domain. You must be sovereign in your domain. Please, find yourself in these three boxes and begin to walk tall. Live tall. The low places is not where you belong. He went low that you might go high. 2 Corinthians 5.21 He that knew not sin was made sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God by him. One of the questions I used to ask myself as a young man was this. Give my heart to Jesus as a teenager. Lord, when you made man and created man, why didn't you just take us to heaven and we live with you there? I mean, why do we have to be here? Angel, you made the angels there in heaven and they worship you every day. Why, why do we have to be here? Why can't you just make us and put us in your presence? Until I came to this understanding, I didn't have an answer. If you are created in God's image, you must be sovereign in your domain. Angels are not created in God's image. They are not sovereign in their domain. Anywhere they are, they are not the ultimate. Anywhere they are, they are not the... But anywhere God is, it must be ultimate. Anywhere man is, it must be... So, two ultimates cannot be in heaven. It will be a clash of the images. Of the image. So, because you are created in God's image, God has to create your own domain for you. So, he put man on the earth to rule and have dominion over the earth. Being in God's image means you must be sovereign in your domain. And that's why we, we love oppressing each other. Yes, if it is not social oppression, financial oppression, any form of oppression, because it is innate in us to rule. So if there's no one to rule, we'll rule each other. <laughs> oh yeah, it is, if you understand it, you'll not be offended. It is innate in everybody to rule. As long as you're in God's nature, it is strange for angels to rule. That's why Satan can, <laughs> he can abuse power. It was not created for him originally. I told everyone in my family, I said, if you choose to be a member of this family, not choose, you are already been chosen for you. You are members of this family. If you don't serve Jesus, you will not have a good life. You cannot. I went to meet one or two that I knew were witches. <laughs> oh yeah, I said, Jesus can save you. At least your witchcraft you've tried now is not helping you. Look at your life. You are poor, you are useless. Why don't you just try Jesus? One of them is one of my main intercessors today. What am I saying? If you don't take charge, you will lose charge. A lot of us are not taking charge. You are not, so, you are not ruling your domain. Canada needs spiritual ruling. Let me explain. Light Light is the only antidote to darkness. We stand in the place of prayer. We back our leaders up in prayer. Say, Lord, lead them aright. Your knees are stronger and more powerful than anything you know. But the devil will make sure we are prayerless. I was young. I gave my heart to Jesus. Played soccer. I played a whole lot of soccer. Still try to play now. 
damaged my legs and a few things. Now, when I got born again, I went after my teammates. Most of them gave their heart to Jesus. So after we've had a, um, a training or a scrimmage, we will just have a small Bible study. So I started, I had a small fellowship of my teammates and some other people from other teams and they would join and I will teach them scripture. And my fellowship was growing and growing and growing. Then suddenly I noticed that the guys were no longer interested in coming for Bible study. I didn't know what the problem was until one day one of them confided in me that he started visiting a new brothel. You know what a brothel is? A new brothel opened on our street. In our locality, in our area, in our community. So the boys, you know young boys, they started going to patronize the prostitutes in the brothel. Secretly. It was very affordable. So most of my converts were now sneaking away. And because of the guilt, they won't come for fellowship. So I felt there's no need for... For me, I felt, it, I felt it was an insult for a brothel to open in my community. So I went. Those days in Africa, you're allowed to go on the street and just preach the gospel. I had the megaphone. I was a full-time evangelist in all sorts. So my morning cry, I decided I'll be having my morning cry right in front of that brothel. They will pour me all sorts, throw me all sorts stood there. One day, I had felt a kick in my spirit. I was 15. I told, I said, I announced it loudly. I said, in the next three weeks, this building will not be here anymore. In the next three weeks, this building will not be here anymore. First week, business became better. Second week, they had a major boom. Third week, Abba, they did expansion. Extension, I'm sure. <laughs> Extension. First month. Second month. Third month. On the last day of the third month, we woke up to a fire. The whole place. No one understood where the fire came from. One of the prostitutes said, thunder struck. And struck the roof. And that's how the fire started. It got burnt down the third month. And guess what? On that same site, after they got rid of that place, obviously business ended. You can't rebuild. You rebuild, I'll burn it again. <laughs> Brethren, take charge. If there's darkness in your family, it's because you're not taking charge. Take charge. Take charge. There's a church on that same site right now. But brethren, God wouldn't do something if somebody doesn't do something. Finally, number three. So let's go through it again. Number one, autoproductive. Number two, you must be sovereign in your domain. Please take charge. Take charge. You are, you, are, you are such a deadly weapon in the spirit. If you, God opens your eyes to see who you are, being God's image, you will almost be cocky. Finally, number three, and this is where the rubber meets the road. This is the real essence of this message. I told you, please, your next level, Satan can't do much if you don't give him access. But please, don't self-destruct. God is bringing you to a revelation of who he is in you and who, he, who you are, whom you are in him. And things are about to just explode. I'm serious. But brethren, if you don't understand this, you might self-destruct. If you are in God's image or you are God's image, God's image demands and requires that you must 
be subject to your words. You must be subject to the things you say. If God says a thing uh, and it doesn't do it, let's go and look for another God. Why God will tell man, the day you eat of it, you die. And though he's God and he reports to no one and no one questions him and he can't change, though he's sovereign, he can't change what he has said. Shows you God's image subjects you to the authority of the things you say. Angels can say a thing and they are not bound by it. And that's why Satan can lie. He's not bound by it. <laughs> but the moment you are in God's image, so only God and man, once they say a thing, it stands. Please stay with me and understand this. Angels can get away by saying stuff and they don't follow through. You and God, once you say a thing, it stands. In fact, God is sovereign. But God is only sovereign until he speaks. The moment he speaks, he loses his sovereignty to his word. Psalm 139, verse number 2. I will worship towards the holy temple. Praise your name for your loving, 138 rather. Praise your name for your loving kindness and for your truth. For thou hast highly exalted your word above all your name. By two immutable things, 6 verse number 18, for which it is impossible for God to lie. Two immutable things. Impossible for God to lie. John 6, 63. Jesus said, it is the spirit that quickens. The flesh profits nothing. The words I say unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Not mere words. Say, the Lord has spoken. Who can this annul? His hand is stretched forth, who can draw it back? For God is not a man that he lies. He's not the son of man that he repents. As he said it, will he not do it? Everything God says, God is bound by it. So when God speaks, God loses his sovereignty to his word, the things he has said. And don't forget, he's his word also. In the beginning was the word, and the word... And the word. Please know this. Animals, angels, any other person can get away with saying anything. They are not bound by their word because they are not created in God's. The image of God says, once you say things, it stands. Let me explain this. My brother, please come again. Come one more time. Thank you for clapping for him, please. Do clap for him. Can I have one other volunteer? Makes no difference, male or female. Thank you, my sister. God bless you. Put your hands together for her too. Now, come. Ma. Please don't forget this in your life. Matthew and chapter 18 and verse number 18. Matthew 18 and 18. Once you find what God has said, go to bed. Even God cannot change it. Even God cannot. He can't. He can't alter it. He can't alter it. Can you give me New King James Version? So I don't have to be explaining this. New King James or King James makes no difference. Thank you. I need you to understand this, ladies and gentlemen. Now, when the Bible says, you know the word of God is here and amen. It's true. Forever, O Lord, thy word settled in heaven. So when God says you will not die but live, ma, go to bed. Go to bed. 
Some promises, any promise you see that has no condition does not need prayers. Any promise you see in scripture that does not have conditions does not need, it is done. Just position yourself. It will happen. It can't change. Even and that shall pass away. A jot in my word. Not possible. It cannot change. Stay with me. So, what's my sister's name? Sister Delcina. Lovely names you have in this church. Delcina. <laughs> Where I come from, before Jesus showed up, the name of us after gods and Satan and the devil. So here is Sister Delsona. Sister, move forward, please. Thank you. Come. Sister Delsona is a Christian. This is what the Bible says. Assuredly. Now, the word of God is already sure. But when you see Jesus emphasize and says, verily, verily or assuredly, please, asterisk, asterisk, asterisk. In other words, if his word will come to pass, this one will come, come to pass. Do you understand that? What does it say? Want to read? I say to you. Hold on. Please, what's the meaning of what, whatsoever, whatever you bind? What's the meaning of whatever, please? English language. My English is really poor. What's the meaning of Whatever. Anything, please do answer me and respond to me. Does that include um, the devil? Does that include um, demons? Does that include your enemies? Does that include your husband? Hold on, please. What's the meaning of whatever? Does that include your husband? Does that include your wife? Does that include your children? Does that include your business? Does that include your career? Does that include your academics? Does that include your ministry? Does that include you? Whatever you bind on earth will be. So heaven does not initiate. Heaven responds to what you initiate. Do you understand? So, until for Psalm 103, verse 20. Psalm 103, verse 20. Are we together? Come on, praise the Lord if you're excited this morning. You're not sounding like God's image. <laughs> the image of God is alive and full of life. Hallelujah. Psalm 103, verse 20. Can we read, please, everyone? I want to read loud with joy. Oh. Hold on. This is what angels do. God's angels, this is what they do. Yes, keep reading. That excel. They are strong. They excel in strength. Yes. They do God's commandment. They can only do what God instructs them to do. Then... The only thing they can implement is God's word. They hack into the voice of his word. Now watch this. Here is sister, beautiful sister Del Sinner. Isn't she beautiful? If you think she's not, you don't know what God's image is. I am fearfully and wonderfully like yourself. Don't wait for anybody to validate you and say, yeah, like Yourself, you are beautifully made. Your head is apportioned the size it is because that's what your husband will want. Let me not go there. <laughs> you know, I wonder these days, everybody wants to marry someone tall. Say, so, well, Pastor, I'm just trusting the Lord for my husband. Or, Especially the sister. I get mischievous sometimes. So what kind of man are you, are you trusting God for? They start with, well, he's called, first thing is tall. What have we done wrong? <laughs> what crime have we committed? 
When Satan shows up, height cannot handle Satan. No. It's the anointing that breaks the yoke. Look for a man full of power and the anointing. Height and tear, 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 tear. You are looking for a six footer. <laughs> you think the guy is tall. Like our basis is very tall. Uh, you think the guy is tall. You know, Saul was the tallest man in Israel until he saw Goliath. <laughs> he now knew that there are levels in height. <laughs> God needed to send a David like myself of my height to come and do with Goliath. Look for a man that has God, full of the anointing and power. Hallelujah. Now she is a child of God. Whatever she binds on and whatever means the angels of God, this is the angel of God. This is our angel. You're married, right? Okay. All right. This is just an illustration. No. <laughs> just an illustration. So this is our angel. Our angel is strong. His own job is to hack into the voice of God's word in her mouth. Stay with me. So when she says, Today is a beautiful day. Beauty, now this is God's angel. With every believer, this is you. Every one of you have at least one angel. Goes with you everywhere you go. Right in the shadows is a demon. An angel of darkness. This is me. So I'm the, <laughs> the bad angel. All right? I'm in the shadows. Every one of us have at least one. Hanging around. Waiting for an opportunity. All right. But they can't move close because of this guy. However, you are the one that will determine who gets to walk. So if she says, Today is a blessed day. In my own family of darkness, blessed is a strange word. We curse people. We don't bless. So who is the custodian of blessings? Myself or himself? So he goes to work and make sure that that whole day Goes ahead of her. That whole day, blessings are following her. Amen. But who got him to walk? Thank you. Today is a bad day. Who is the custodian of the word bad among two of us? He has to now step into the shadows. Because in his family, that word is strange. The kingdom he represents do not have that word in their vocabulary. I am the custodian of bad. <laughs> I go ahead. I make crooked ways more crooked. <laughs> I make valleys deeper. I exalt mountains. I make sure that that day she must cry. That's my job. But who got me to walk? Do you know why she can't say I don't mean it? Because she's created in. Have you ever seen God say, I, I didn't mean what I said, though. I was just joking. Oh, no. Ecclesiastes 5 says, please, my mindful of what you say, don't tell the angel, you didn't mean, eh, it was just an error. So when you wake up and say, well, this is my relationship, this marriage is, is gone. Who will make sure it's gone? No, no, hold on. If you wake up and say this marriage is gone, we're done. Who will make sure the marriage is done? God or the devil? No. I take that again. <laughs> when you wake up in the morning and say, well, this is my husband, useless man. Who will make sure that your husband is useless? Whatever you bind shall be bound. 
So when you say your husband is useless, heaven will make sure your word does not fall to the ground. For one reason, you are in God's. If that falls to the ground, your blessing declarations also should fall to the ground. James chapter 3 said, The tongue, though small, is the most potent part of a human being. Let me show you the power of this tongue. Exodus chapter 14. Start me from verse 17 or so. Exodus, sorry, Exodus 17 from verse 14. Exodus 17, 14, please. Are you with me this morning? You are, you are the word. Can you go back to your key, sir? You are the word at the beginning. One with God, the Lord, most high. In your in creation. And now reveal in you. What a wonderful name it is. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, our King. What a wonderful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a wonderful name it is. The name. Jesus. Sir, I said 17, 14. I corrected myself. Sorry for the mix-up. You didn't want heaven without us. So Jesus, you brought heaven down. My sin was great. Your love was greater. My sin was great. Your love was greater. What can separate us now? What can separate us now? What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares to What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. Can we read this passage, please? 17 and verse 14. Can we read aloud together? Then the Lord said to Moses, What did God say he would do? He would utterly blot out. Annihilate. The Amalekites will become extinct. That's what God told him. Now look at what he went telling the people. Next verse. Next verse. Verse 16. Now this is what Moses went telling the people. Want to read? Was that what God said? Was that what God said? What did God say? I will wipe them out. The, the Amalekite that saw made a mistake with. Huh? Uh, were alive because of the error of Moses. And you notice that though God told him a thing, it was what he declared that God not what he said. I tell that again. God honored his Moses' word, not his word. 
Because you see, the truth of God is total. The part of it that you receive is what becomes yours. God will declare to you, it is what you declare that stands. That's why you must listen carefully to hear what the Lord will say to you. Let me show you the power of what you say, ladies and gentlemen. Genesis and chapter 22, we stop here. What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. Genesis and 22, read verse number 5 for me. Genesis 22, 5, quickly. My time is up. Genesis 22, 5. Ma, this was Abraham going, God said, go and kill your son, your only begotten son, Isaac. Now, please, God says, go slaughter your son. So he takes his son, Isaac, and he goes along. Don't worry, this guy was going to go kill his son. And he got there, just before they got to the place of slaughter, he stopped the, the young men and he said to them, can we read what he said? Stay here. The lad, we are not reading, some of you are just staring. Want to read? Stay here. And we will. Did he say, I will come back? How come the person that is going to go and kill will come back with him? We will come back. It's only he and Isaac that were going. But you see, do you understand what I'm saying? Because, you see, the thing you declare is what God can back up. You don't overcome by your thoughts. You overcome by the words, your testimony. Don't think against the devil. The devil says, hey, you catch coronavirus. You are thinking in your heart. Oh no. The devil can't hear your thoughts. He responds to words. Angels don't carry out your thoughts. They obey the word of his command. Stand to your feet. Thank you so much, my sister. The Lord bless you real good. I appreciate you so much, sir. Thank you. Please, whatever you do, be here tonight. The beauty of that passage you read in Matthew 18, 18 is the B part of it. God will always give a way of escape. He also said, in case you've gone saying wrong things and binding wrong things, whatever you lose on earth, will be losing in heaven. So you called your husband useless. Call him the best man that has ever been. Change what you say. For as the name of a man is, so he is. Stop saying I have failed. That's not your language. You are incapacitating your angel and enabling the angel of darkness. Just by the things you say. Why? Your words cannot fall to the ground. You are created in God's image. Are there things you have said that you know? Pastor PK, I'm very guilty. I... I I call my students stupid and foolish. Tell my son, you are, just the, you are just the only problem I have in my life. He will remain the only problem you have. Change what you call it. Where you've bound yourself and said, well... I know these people from home office. Uh, is it home, sorry, it's not home office here. That's UK. That's, um, what's your immigrations here? CIA. Uh, whatever. So, oh, I know it's six months. They won't, they, won't, they won't send mine until six months. Even if God has sent an angel to go and accelerate your concern, the angel will have to wait until the six months you said expires. It cannot come. He can't come. Your language.
Somebody came to me yesterday. She said she had, she had uh, a, a small growth. So I asked her, I said, what, have you told it to leave your body? She said, I prayed to God. I said, no, that's not what I asked you. She said, have you spoken to it? Because whatever you bind or whatever you lose, whatever is whatever, please, don't try to process the word of God excessively. It means whatever. I said, I'm not the owner of your body. I can decree, command it to leave, now it will leave. How will you handle it when it knocks on your door and you're feeling the symptoms again? I said, you are the owner of your body. You are the landlord of your body. You can decide who you want as tenants or not. So anything that you find that look, come, you are not paying tenants here. I didn't even even invite you in. Get strangers will hear my if you have not spoken to them, they will remain. Strangers will hear my voice, they will submit themselves to me. So I, she now said, Pastor, is true. She had a growth in her hand some time back. And the doctor told her, maybe she went to see a Christian doctor, said, have you told it to die? Said, no. Said, no. So she wakes up every morning. You are dead. Growth, you are dead. And you don't leave any scar. She said one day she woke up and she didn't find the sky again. She didn't find the growth again. I'm going to set you loose to just declare. But whatever you do, make sure you're here in the evening. Come and lift up your hands and lift up your voices. Declare as God's image. Speak to mountains. Speak to situations. Reverse some of the things you said wrongly.